Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of life and love, God of many names and no name, source of all. We offer up our prayers of gratitude for new life in our congregation in many ways, even in the midst of a difficult time, even as we mourn and fear death. For new members, for babies, for the opportunity to see each other's faces, for creative and beautiful ways to connect. Even briefly, we give thanks. We know that when we choose connection over isolation, when we reach out a hand or accept one, that we are choosing you. We are choosing the very beating heart of life and life is choosing us. We give thanks this day for the lives of C.T. Vivian, John Lewis and Emma Sanders, giants of the civil rights era who died this week. We mourn their passing. We send blessings of love and peace and power to their families and to all who rise up in their legacies. We feel the twin aches and the twin terrors of this pandemic and the injustices baked into the foundation of our country. Our hearts break open for all the ways that people are crushed and terrorized and abandoned. where we are in need. We pray for healing, even if there isn't a cure. Where we suffer from systemic injustice, we pray for the fire of righteous rage and strategy and the collective will to make change. Where we fail, where we turn away from one another, where we are selfish, where we are willfully ignorant, we pray for mercy and for the opportunity to make repair. Where we are afraid, we pray for comfort. Where we are joyful, we pray to be protected. Where we are isolated, we pray for new and creative ways to feel connected to one another and to the beating heart of life. Where we are connected, we pray to be strengthened. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not love. Amen.
Our reading this morning comes to us from the poet, Lisa Doge, No Hothouse Flowers. No hothouse flowers these, bred for perfection, dyed and trimmed, and arranged to order, clothed in ribbons and bows. Not these, no. These are hardy, raw, and wild. Grown under the sky, they've weathered the wind and the rain and the heat. These drew nutrients from the neighborhood soil and energy from the sun. These survived pests and diseases. These grow where they were planted by loving hands or the whim of birds or the caprice of the breeze. These have petals washed by the dew, glowing with the colors of the hills, the sea, the prairies, and the rocks. Their delicate perfume carries in it the fragrance of the earth. No, not perfect these, only holy, a blessing to the eye and heart and soul. Our homily today for our flower ceremony is not mostly my words. It comes to us from a friend and colleague of mine, the Reverend Hannah Capaldi, who serves as the Minister for Faith Formation at the First Unitarian Church in Philadelphia. Today we gather for our annual flower ceremony, a ritual of blessing that reminds us we all started as seeds charges us to think about how we each reach for the sun. It began with Norbert Chopek in 1923. Norbert brought Unitarianism to Czechoslovakia where he preached a theology of deep community born out of the belief that each life is worth honor and dignity that together we can become something greater than we could alone. It was Norbert's wife, Maya, who brought the ritual to the United States. She was a widow. Norbert had been killed in the Nazi concentration camps. His theology considered too dangerous, too threatening to the power of the state to separate and kill. The ritual started back in Prague in 1923. We're approaching 100 years. 100 years of this special way of honoring the individual beauty of each of our lives, as wild and precious as a flower, as unique and unfolding as a blossom. Each of us a flower with different reasons, different curiosities, different hopes and heartaches. Bring all of that here today to this flower ceremony. This blessing is an affirmation of life, of the vital promise we make to one another to uphold life as unfolding and beautiful. And so here we are at our annual flower ceremony a few months later than we normally do it, separated by screens. We've blossomed differently this year. We sit unfurled in the sun, changed by all the moments that led to this one. Yesterday, we gathered for the first time in person at the church building since March to bring flowers and share them, to drive by and crack open car doors and windows, to sit a while far apart and choose flowers imperfect flowers, some wilting in the July heat. You came. Some of you grew them, brought them, and took them, this small gift we give to one another from the bounty around us. So if you have those flowers, or any near you, gather them in. If you don't, you can find an image of a flower in your mind and to help you. I 
lifting up, lifting up what we have left over from yesterday. Find a flower. The blossom that catches our eye, that beguiles our nose, that fills the air with the scent of the season. Can you remember the first time you stuck your face in the flowers? Can you recall when you shone a buttercup under your chin? Can you feel the inspiration of a sunflower seven feet tall or the layered perfection of a peony? Feel the velvet of each petal. Recall the smooth and sturdy stalk. You can turn your videos on again and see us all gathered like this, holding some small shared stalk of beauty in your hands or in your mind. year in and year out. Another year passes, another flower ceremony. We sit unfurled a little different this year. We grew from seeds planted last year, just as we plant seeds this year. What will come will come. What will pass will pass. Rest your gaze upon a flower. Rest your mind in knowing that we are part of the perennial. We are the community Norbert envisioned, hardy and ever ready to proclaim the beauty of life in the face of disaster. We are still here. Think of the flower in your heart, the aching need to reach for the sun the aching need to be a part of something greater than yourself. Here you are. Together, we seek it. Together, we point the way. Grow here. Your life is unfolding. Our lives together are unfolding. The possibilities of history which are terrifying and rich are unfolding and we blossom together. A magnificent bouquet rooted and reaching to the sun. May you know that it is so for you and for us all. Will you rise in body or in spirit for our closing hymn number 21? in your gray hymnal for the beauty of the earth.
sound and sight, source of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise for the wonder of each hour of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, source of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human care, sister, brother, parent, child, for the kinship we all share, for all gentle thoughts and mild, 